Hey, uh, how y'all doing tonight? Let's see your Bibles tonight. See your pens. Let's see your lesson. Turn to the person next to you and say, get your Bible out. Get your pen out. Get your brain out. Genesis 1, page 2. <laughs> I wish I could sing it. I don't even try to sing to my wife, it's so bad. <laughs> it just wouldn't even work. All the love she has for me it still wouldn't work. <laughs> Lord, we just thank you for today. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your faithfulness. We thank you for that we can be here today. And Lord, I pray that you would speak to us and teach us more about our beginning and our end and our purpose. And Lord, I pray you make it clear to us that you made us, you created us, you designed us in amazing ways. In Jesus' name, amen. If you are here for the first time or the second time and you forgot what happened the first time you were here, we are in a series uh, on week seven, part seven of an eight-week series on an evolution creation called Who's Your Daddy? Uh, some people think that their daddy is that brother right there, and uh, other people believe that their daddy is God in heaven, the creator of the universe. So <laughs> we're going to talk more about that tonight. We're going to talk about what happened in day six of creation. But before I do that, next week we're going to talk about, and it'll be our last week, we're going to um, discuss where all the ethnic groups come from, and how God could have and did create all the ethnic groups. One, two. How God created all the ethnic groups from two people, and we're going to look at that uh, both from the Bible and from biology and science. And so come next week. Uh, and we're going to talk about all the, uh, some of the topics that deal with race and race relations and interracial relationships. Should that wrong? Is that biblical or not? Uh, and all that kind of stuff, some people, some of the questions you have. So we'll deal with a lot of that next week. But this week we're going to talk about what God made today. If you look at your lesson plan, I just want to give you a little preview of what we're going to do. It says that God created the light and the water. He created the heavens and the sky the land and the seas, the sun, the moon, the stars, light and water, land and the heavens and the sky, land and the seas, the sun, the moon, the stars, land, animals, creeping things, and then man. That's what we're going to deal with today. Okay, so let's read Genesis 1, verse 24. Hmm. Genesis 1, verse 24, it says, God said, let the earth bring forth living creature according to its kind, cattle and creeping thing, and beasts of the earth according to its kind. And it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth according to its kind, cattle according to its kind, everything that creeps on the earth according to its kind, its kind and God saw that it was good. Very clearly, God, the Bible says that God made the cattle According to the kind, so from two cattle, he made, he could make all the cattle. He made uh, the creeps, all the little insects, and I could do a whole day, and wish I could do a whole day on insects alone. And the amazingness, the, 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 the evidence of design and irreducible complexity on insects. I was, I was watching an Animal Planet the other day, and, and uh, Jeff Corwin, and he was in this... Um, Rainforest, I believe. Uh, yeah, I believe it was in the rainforest because it started raining on him, and he said that's what all the rainforest is about. And he was underneath this this canopy of spider webs with thou actually with hundreds of thousands, so he estimated, of thousands of spiders that worked together to build this big web about as big as a stage. And he was underneath it. And then it came down, and they were catching bugs left and right. And these spiders were injecting their poison in the bugs that they would catch. And what they do is they inject their poison in the bug that they catch in the, in the web, 
this, some spiders do this. They wrap them up and then they, they, they inject this poison and it goes in the spider and dissolves and melts the insides of the bug and then they suck it out like a straw. <laughs> that's, that's pretty amazing, huh? <laughs> it's like, you know, just biting somebody and just, and they, and they just melt and you just, you just drink them. <laughs> that's how spiders eat. You know what's amazing about that, though? What's amazing about that is what they're injecting into the bug that they're going to dissolve is that it doesn't melt them. Just a little something, something for you. <laughs> because in them, God has designed a lining to protect them from whatever that stuff is. Okay? Verse 26. God said, let us, everybody say us, make man an hour, say hour, image according to our, say our. Now, who's us? Jesus is not us. Jesus is one. Father, Father, Father. God said, let us. There's a trinity right there in Genesis. Hmm. Jesus was there. Remember the Bible in Genesis 1-1? In the beginning was God. The word was with God. The word became God and make, became flesh, and through him all things were made, and without him nothing was made that was made. He was there right there. Boom. There you go. Look what it says. He says, let us make man in our image, and according to our likeness, let them have dominion over the fish, the birds, the cattle, over all the earth and over every creep that creeps on the ground. And God made man in his own image, and in the image of God, he created him male and female. He created them. You know, remember how many times I was emphasizing before that God said the first day, the second day, the third day? Remember that? Evening and morning were the first day, evening and morning were the second day, all through the six days. I emphasized that over and over again, especially the day we talked about that God clearly says in this book that he made it in days, not ages and eons of time. We talked about him putting the sun, the greater light, to rule the day and the lesser light, the moon, to rule the night. Day and night, evening and morning, day and night, third day, over and over again. And he kept telling us the same thing. Why? Because we're hard-headed. And we still don't think it was days, even though he said it nine times in, the, in this one chapter. But look what he says in these two verses where he, how many times he says he made us in his image. Watch how many times he says. First, let me look how many times he refers to himself as a plural God. He says, us, our, our. Three times. Get it straight. It's us. Our, our. But look in verse 26, how many times he says image. He said, let us make man in our own, in our image once, according to our likeness twice. Look at verse 27. God created man in his own image three times. In the image of God, he created man, male and female, four times. He wants you to know clearly that unlike any other thing he made, he made you to be like him. He wanted you to know clearly that unlike anything else he created, anything else he designed, that you he created to be and have his image and to be in his likeness. Remember, that's what he's saying. He says, look, on day one I made the heavens and the earth. I separated the waters from the waters. I separated the water from the land. I made the seas and the land. I made plants to grow out of the soil. I made water to evaporate out of the ocean, become clouds, float over the land, and, and rain fresh water comes out. Salt water comes down fresh water. I created the bugs, or actually the bugs, the land animals, the fish, and the birds. I did all of that. And then I made man. God created earth. The heavens, the atmosphere, the size of the earth. We talked about the size being just right to, to hold in its atmosphere the necessary gases for life. We talked about that. We talked about the sun and the earth being the just right distance to heat the earth, just the right temperature to sustain life. The moon, just the right distance and just the right size to sustain the gravitational force on the earth to sustain life. We talked about all that. That God did all of that just so we can be here to represent him. And to have his image. No other animal has his image except us. Hmm. Evolution says you are just like an animal. You evolved. You're no different. You're just a higher intelligence. That's all. You got, you got some dumb animals. Then you got some smart animals like an like a, like a, like a, like a elephant smart, a, a dolphin smart, uh, some, some primates are smart. And then you have man the smartest. That's all you are. You're nothing but an animal. That's why abortion is no problem. Because you're nothing but, not, you're not even human then. You're just flesh. 
But ladies, all of you had one? Why does it hurt so bad? Because it was a life. It was a life. They're lying to you. Kill somebody, go to prison. Also, you're, you're, you know, you will punish you in prison. But if you can get off, got a good lawyer, eh, your life, you're just going to go on the ground anyway. You go on the ground anyway. It's all relative. The, 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 the whole mentality of the survival of the fittest, let me take advantage of people, let me get over on people. It's all the evolutionary mindset that you are nothing but another higher level of intelligent animal. And when you die, there's no afterlife. You're just going to go on the ground. God says, no, 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 no. I made you my image. I want to speak to you, talk to you. And we're going to see more about what that means in a minute. But also, you have an eternal component to you that all these other things don't. Little Fido, your dog, ain't going to be in heaven. But you're going to be in heaven or hell somewhere. Every single one of you is eternal. None of you are going to die and cease to exist. You will live somewhere. It will be either with God or without God. God, you alone, me and you alone, above all things that God made, he created us to have his image. He says it right there. It's not because of anything we've done. It's simply because of his love. Let's look what it says. Let's keep going. God created man. Verse 27, God created man in his own image, and in the image of God, he created him male and female. Ladies, guess what? You have God's image just like a man. God didn't say, I'm going to make man. Yeah, there he is. You the man. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay, here's your servant. He didn't say that. Some guys think that. He didn't say that. He says, I'm going to make man. And I said last week, then he figured it all out. He got it right, and then he made woman. Amen. <laughs> Now, he didn't really make any mistakes with man, but he just made the woman. And he says, I'm going to make them both in my image, male and female. Okay? Let's keep reading. Verse 28. The Lord said, the Lord blessed them, the God blessed them and said, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and every creep, everything that creeps on the ground. And then we're going to see right now that God created man and beast to be vegetarian. God said, see, I've given you every herb that yields seed, which is on the face of the earth, and every tree that whose fruit yields seed, to you it shall be for food. And to every beast of the earth, to every bird of the air, to every everything that creeps in the earth, in which there is life, I have given every green herb for food, and it was so. What does that mean? That means that Adam and Eve and all the animals and all the insects and all the bugs and all the fish and all the birds were supposed to just eat not meat, but fruit and vegetables and nuts and everything God made. Mm-hmm. But since the flood came, God said, now you can eat burgers, so in and out is all cool. <laughs> but it may not be good for you. It may kill you, but you're allowed to eat it. What does that mean? That you don't need to eat burgers or fish or chicken to be totally healthy and strong. You see that rhino behind me? You see that big gorilla? They don't eat meat. They're stronger than anybody in this room. Those dudes right there. They, they, as a matter of fact, there's a whale. One of the biggest animals on the planet Earth is a, is a whale shark, about 50 feet long. You know all he eats is little plankton in the water. He swims with his mouth open like this. <laughs> and he, thousands of gallons a day go in his mouth, and those little micro microscopic plants, that's what he eats, and he's 50 feet long. 50 feet long. So don't think, well, oh, you know, we have to eat meat. No, that, you don't have to eat meat. Even today, you don't have to eat. Become a vegetarian, you'll be fine. You'll be healthy and strong. Believe me, you trust me. You can get all that stuff from what God made uh, in the earth. Okay. Turn to your lesson plan, because I want to talk about a few things here before we get into what it means to be in his image. I want to take you back to last week. Last week, we talked about Darwinism. We talked about the fact that Darwin had a theory that somehow, one day, billions of years ago, life formed in a little pond somewhere. And that life was a single cell life form in water, and it evolved. It became more complex, became a jellyfish. Evolved, became more complex, became a fish. Evolved, became more complex, became an amphibian. Evolved, it became more complex, became a reptile, a land mammal, a man. Okay, that's Darwin's theory. It took billions of years for this process to happen. Now, people who study evolution and study anthropology, because none of us were there, all we have to do is look at the evidence. That's all we can do is take the evidence that we have today and look and tell us and look to see what the evidence tells us. 
So if you look at your lesson plan, I wrote down fossil record. A fossil, the fossil record is the known recorded evidence that the fossils that have been found give us. It says a skeletal evidence provided by the bones left behind by animals of the past. Now these animals can be insects, they can be land animals, fish, and they also can be plants. So that means plants also. They are plants, fossils of plants, land animals, birds, people, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, that people find all the time and they form a record, a known record of evidence. What God says is that he made fish, he made birds, he made insects, he made man. What evolution says is that there was a, some fish-like thing and then everything evolved out of that. Two separate stories. But what does the evidence say? Before I tell you that, if evolution is true, you would have a fish, and between a fish and a reptile, there would be transitional forms. In other words, I'll give you one we all understand real clearly. We have apes on Earth. And if evolution was true, there would be a version of him that was a little closer to a version of us and then a version of that animal a little closer in between the version and us. So in other words, there'd be an ape with, on all fours, then there'd be an ape on three legs, then there'd be an ape standing up like this, then there'd be an ape standing up like this, then there'd be us standing like this. Are you with me? That's a transitional form. It's transitioning from ape to man. Now, if evolution is true, there should be transitional forms for every type of creature that they say ever transitioned. In other words, it'd be a transitional form of a fish to a reptile, or from a reptile to an amphibian to a reptile, and a reptile to a mammal. There'd be transitional forms from all these thousands of species that exist. There are none. The fossil record says this, that all they find is fish. Then they find reptiles. Then they find bones of animals, land animals. Then they find bones of birds. And you know what they say? That the fossil record shows all these species fully formed, and they appear suddenly. In other words, they're just here one day. They didn't evolve. So they started looking at that and going, Darwin's theory is kind of weak because the evidence doesn't support Darwin's theory. So what they did is they came up with another theory. In other words, they came up with another theory to explain the fact that we're all here, but there's no evidence for us evolving. They don't want to say it's creation because that's God. Can't use God. So listen to the theory they came up with. The vast majority of evolutionary changes in the history of life must have taken place in small populations and occurred so rapidly that there was not enough organisms nor enough time for transitional fossils to be preserved. <laughs> Let me explain that to you in common language. That this animal right here evolved and became an intelligent, loving, passionate, God-conscious being so quick. How you doing? <laughs> and not enough of the versions that were in between died and left fossils that there's none. So we just, it just, he just one day went, I'm a man. <laughs> not only did that happen with the gorilla, but it happened with the fish. It happened with, with land animals, it happened with reptiles, it happened with all these animals, and there's no evidence. You know what? That is crazy. Let's look at your lesson plan. What is missing in the link? Write down pictures or guesses. Pictures or guesses. Whenever you look in a textbook or you go to the museum and you see a picture of an ape and then you see a picture of a 80% ape, 20% man, thing, 60% ape, 40% man, being, 50-50, 40% ape, 60% man, and then you see man. You know what I'm talking about? They show you an ape, and then they show you all these things in between, and then they show you a man. They don't have evidence for that stuff. What they do is they find a bone, they find a skull, and they form the rest of the being, and they put it in there and tell you this is the missing link. In other words, those things they show you in a book and in the museum don't really exist. They're guessing. They're guessing. 
Let me give you a few of those guesses and what they've concluded pretty much their guesses were. You've heard of the Neanderthal man. Everybody heard of Neanderthal man? Okay, Neanderthal man. After much study and evidence, the Neanderthal man, they believe now, is just a human with rickets, arthritis. He just bent over like that. That's all it was. Hey, you, you know, Grandpa had a little hunchback, a little knees were weak, and is bent over, and they said, here he is, the missing link. The next one is Lucy. Lucy was one of the missing links. Lucy ended up being just an extinct ape. That's all she was. But they said, here is a missing link. Here is something transitioning from an ape to a man. Piltdown Man, this was, they say, the biggest hoax ever. The Piltdown Man was a guy who found a human skull and an orangutan jaw. So orangutan is a, you know what orangutan is? It's a monkey, an ape, primate. And they took them, put them together, and because they didn't fit, he filed it down to fit into the human skull and put a mold around it and sent that mold to the museum and said, here it is. It's all fake. The next one is Cro-Magnum Man. He was simply a European person, a person. Nebraska Man. This was the, this one, the, the trippiest one for me. Nebraska Man, they made Nebraska Man and his wife. Guess what they found? A, a tooth. From a tooth, they made the whole man and his wife. <laughs> Guess what kind of tooth it was? It was a tooth to an extinct pig. They lied to you. How are you going to find a tooth and say, this is what the guy looked like and what his woman looked like? I mean, we're going to say, well, you know, he got good teeth, so he probably got a fine woman. I mean, wh what's up with that? Um, Ramapithecus, a great ape. It just ended up being an ape. Let me tell you something. The Bible says a man says in his heart there is no God. Someone asked outside, stop me. He's, from an he's an anthropology major, was an anthropology major. He said, I want to talk to you. I'm an anthropology major. I think, uh-oh. Make sure I got this stuff right, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> he says to me, um, basically, you know, a lot of the missing links, they're confirming that they're just people. That they're saying they're missing links, but they're just people. And he says, what do you think about some other evidence? I said, you know, I never thought about it until I started talking to him. Is that God said he made Adam first. Adam was a superior being to all of us because Adam was designed to live forever. Okay. So his physical makeup, we don't even understand. He was never going to die until he sinned. Okay. Adam named all the animals. Remember that? How did Adam do that? Well, think about it. Adam had full, probably had full capacity of his brain. You and I use one, two, three, four, five percent max of our brain capacity. What does that mean? That there's 95 percent of our brain capacity. We don't even know what it does. We don't have concept. We may have a concept, you know, we can memorize more stuff, we can learn languages faster, but there's probably stuff our brain could do that we don't even know it could do. I'll give you an example. You ever wonder if you, if you can smell color? Think about it. Why can't you smell color? Well, what do you mean? Could you smell the color red? Does the color red even have a smell? Well, of course not. Why, how do you know that? Can you smell blood? A shark can smell blood from a mile away, a drop of blood in the ocean from a mile away. Can you do that? Can you smell water in the air and know that the lake's over there? Maybe, maybe not. Can you see sound? Sound is a vibration in the air. That's all it is. Can you see it? Can you see electromagnetic waves? Can you see UV light? There's things that animals can do we can't do, and guess what? God has given us a brain bigger than theirs with capacity of stuff probably maybe they can't do. Maybe, I don't know. We don't know. But my point is this, that Adam, God made Adam, who was going to live forever, and his woman too, so you know she was fine. <laughs> she was going to live forever. So he made Adam and Eve. And if we talk in natural terms, they were superior than us. They were going to live forever. They had capacities we probably never will have. Because we're sinful, faulty, dying, aging, uh, uh, decaying. They had no decay in their life. And then man sinned, and man in his uh, status, physical status, 
bump went down. In other words, he became, death took over. We age. We get gray. We get wrinkled. We die. So God started here. He didn't start there. He started here. So when a guy asked me, what do, you, what do I think about the missing links? I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. If God started here, not there. See, evolution says God started here and evolved up. God says, no, 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 I made everything perfect. And then it got worse. So it totally contradicts and totally goes the opposite direction. So for there to be some man walking around the woods, well, he's inferior to Adam. He's not evolving to Adam. He's decaying from Adam. It's a total opposite direction. So when I think about missing links, there could be none because God didn't start down there. He started up here. Look what it says in your lesson plan. It says, who is talking? It says, no, no more God said, but let us make man our image. Look what he says in Jeremiah 1.5 right there in your, in, your, in your plan. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. Before God formed you in the womb. Now check this out. There was a day when you were a sperm and an egg. Man makes sperm every day. Woman has 400 eggs, give or, t give or take, when she's born. And those come, they come down once every month. You got all the eggs you're going to have. You don't make any more. But the man makes sperm. I don't know why he did it that way. When the sperm gets to the egg, the egg hardens. The contents of the sperm and the contents of the egg unite and make a one-celled human, a zygote, a fertilized egg. In that fertilized egg is a cell. That, that fertilized egg is a cell. A cell, if you want to look in your, in your lesson plan, a cell is a biological factory. It's one way of explaining it. A biological factory has a digestive system, has a waste disposal system, has a respiratory system. It has electrical currents. It has a way of detecting uh, uh, nutrients and le letting them in the cell and preventing them from coming in, getting rid of waste product. It has a way to transport and move on the cell, very complex, not understood totally by man. You have the cell. You have tens of trillions of cells in your body, and trillions die every day. What does that mean? That every day, your whole body is regenerating itself, your whole body. Hmm. That when you look in the mirror today, in five years from now, the physical you that looks in the mirror will not be the same physical you that's here today. It'll be all renewed. <laughs> And it does it the same. Isn't that something? That when you look in the mirror, you go, it still looks like me. In other words, this face is going to be replaced by new cells, and they're going to make the same face with the same scars, the same discolorations, the same freckles. Ain't that something? That your feet are going to look the same. Even the crust on your feet is going to come back. <laughs> Can I get an email? You know what I'm talking about? You, you want to pray that stuff away, but it's coming back. That's a cell. In your cell, you have a DNA, right? You write DNA, right? Biological computer chip. Biological computer chip. Biological computer chip. A biological computer chip that has more information in it than any computer system we know. DNA, if you took the DNA out of one cell and stretched it out, it's like a string of information, coded information. If you stretch it out on one DNA in one cell, it would be five feet long. If you took all the DNA out of your body and stretch them out end to end, it would be 10 billion miles. I know you don't believe me, but it's true. All that's in this little tiny microscopic thing. Now watch this. Watch, this is amazing. In your lesson plan, see where it says differentiation? Write down cells group to form tissue and organs. Just write that down. I'll explain it to you. Cells group together to form tissues and organs. Okay? Over 200 different kinds. Watch this. This is amazing. One cell turns into two. Two into four. Four into eight. 16, 32, 64, 132. You got me? 128. My bad. And so you have, you have these cells. What these cells do is that one group of cells will go over here and become a brain. Another group of cells will come over here and become your heart. Another group of cells will come over here and become your stomach and all the chemicals in your stomach to digest food. When it returns to the brain, it'll be all the chemicals to run your brain to enable you to have dreams, vision, memory. Another group of cells will come over here and become your eye, your nose, your tongue, your ear, the wax in your ear, 
the bones in your ear that shake when your vibration hits the, 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 um, your eardrum and the fluid inside those bones to shake and the little hairs in your bone in your ear that tickle the nerve that, so you can have sound. All these cells start to make that stuff. And then they start to, it's called differentiation. This is what boggles doctors' minds. What makes these things do that? Jeremiah 1.5, I formed you in the womb. <laughs> I do it. He is God every day. Babies are being, being conceived. He's going, whoop, 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 every day, all the moon, whoop, whoop, whoop. And doctors are going, we don't know how it happens. We don't know how it happens. And God's going, whoop, 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 whoop. Not only does God take these cells to make a brain, to make a, to make a stomach, to make the esophagus, to make the heart, to make the lover, the liver, the lover, <laughs> the liver, the kidneys, the feet, the knees, the joints, the muscles, the skeletons. He combines them to make systems where they can talk to each other. In other words, you have a digestive system and all the organs and chemicals and hormones associated with the digestive system, the nervous system, the skeletal system, the muscular system, the endocrine system. And all they talk, they talk so they can work as a system, and then they talk to each other. What do I mean by that, talk to each other? I like to scare my kids. And when I scare my kids, or if you ever get scared, as soon as I scare them, their body jerks, their heart races, they sweat, they scream, and they start breathing heavy, <laughs> like that. You're driving a car, someone cuts in front of you, <laughs> Do you know what I'm talking about? You don't think to do that. You react to do that. And what happens is the adrenaline shoots through your body. It tells your heart to race. It tells your lungs to, be, to start high, uh, breathing faster because you need more oxygen. It tells your pores to open up so you could sweat. And it tells your body to jerk and do something that you instinctively think is right. Sometimes it's not. It tells you, and then you scream out of fear, and all that happens like that. Why? Because your body's wired to communicate to itself. When you run, do you ever wonder why you start breathing heavy? You don't make that conscious decision. You ever wonder why you start perspiring? You don't make that conscious decision. You ever wonder why muscles grow after you lift weights? You don't make that conscious decision. They're, 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 the body's speaking to itself. God in the DNA. All that information's in the DNA. And from what I have read, we only know 10% of, we only understand how 10% of the DNA works. All that's in every cell. And check this out. Every cell of your body has the same exact DNA. In other words, it has the same gang of information. And what happens is the liver just accesses this part. The heart accesses this part of the information. The stomach accesses this part. How do they know that for the stomach cells to access this part? They don't know. It just does it. That is more complicated than any computer system. Not a computer, a computer system, network, than has ever been made on the planet Earth. And yet, an evolutionist wants you to believe that it just happens. And let me tell you something. It happens that way in every living creature. That guy? This thing? How come we don't, our DNA doesn't make scales like this crocodile? Because God didn't put that in our DNA. Remember, remember God said he made everything according to a kind? Well, guess what? Every kind has a genetic limitation. In other words, our kind, there's no information in our DNA that will produce something that will enable us to breathe underwater. It's not there, but it's in fish. Because God made it that way. It's by design. It's by design. Look, 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 turn your thing over. The eye, I, I mentioned last week that the fingerprint has 14 or 16 identical char characteristics to identify you. I was wrong. It's 35. The fingerprint has 35 uh, uh, individual identifiable characteristics. So when you take a fingerprint, there's 35 ways they can look. Okay, that's you. The eye has 266 unique characteristics to you. That's why retinal scan is so much, is foolproof. Every eye has 266 characteristics to identify, to distinguish you from somebody else. Every eye of every human. Accident? Ingenious design. Do you know what kind of computer program you would have to put together to, and, and, and to design every eye, every pair of eyes to be individually coded for 266 different characteristics. I'm sure it could be done if you told them, do this, do this, do this. But it wouldn't happen by accident. Come on. Come on. 
Um, I don't want to go to E. I, I, I want to get to this. See where it says veins? You can put vascular system. That means your veins, your capillaries, your arteries. If you took all the veins, all the capillaries, all the arteries out of your body and put them end to end, they would go around the equator two and a half times. <laughs> well, that just can't be true. It is true. Some capillaries are so small that when the blood goes through them, they have to go through one red blood cell at a time. That's so small. How do you know that? Just cut your finger and you'll bleed. Cut your body anywhere. Just try it. Go home tonight. <laughs> try your foot, your leg, your neck, your finger. Your you'll bleed every time. Why? Because there's blood everywhere. Because these capillaries are everywhere. They saturate your whole body. God said, you know what? You need oxygen. You need blood. So I'm going to saturate your whole body with this, this tree. Of now, if you evolved for billions of years and these things were like, well, you know, there's no leg, blood getting to the leg. Your leg is gone, dead. You die. God designed you. But unlike any other creature, he says, okay, we got the blood in every animal. We got a heart. We got liver. We got reproductive system. We got digestive system. We got a nervous system in every animal. We got a, 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 a psyche in every animal. They know what to do. But you, I gave specialness to. You, I said, I'm going to make you in my image. You're going to be like me. I'm going to give you three ways. Let's look at, look, at, look at it. It says, man has the opportunity to walk with God. The responsibility to carry out God's plan. Here's the dangerous part. The freedom to disobey God. Hmm. Yep. You can tell God, I'm not interested. I don't believe animals can. When I, used to, I grew up in New York, when, and every fall, the little sparrows that I saw all summer would start to group together. They become little flocks of birds. First, all summer you see one here, two here, three there. But then in the fall, you see 10, 20, 100. And then they would leave. They would fly south because it got cold. I've never seen any sparrow say, I ain't going. <laughs> I spent all summer building this nest. I'm staying right here. <laughs> you know what? God said, no, y'all got to go south. You got to go south. This is how you mate. This is when you, this is when you mate. This is how you take care. They're like almost programmed. We, God says, I'm going to give you freedom. You can say no to me. There's a consequence, but you can say no to me. Three ways. He took, three ways. Look at, your, look at your thing. Man was given dominion to rule like him. As a steward, man is to manage God's resources. We are to rule, but for benefit, to manage that God would be glorified. As believers, we are to manage relationships and be our brother's keeper. Hmm. As a father, we are to use God's given authority to represent God. If you're a dad, guess what? God has given you his own title, father. Don't misrepresent him. It would be a shame for your, your father, your son, your child to grow up and fear anyone with the title father because of you. That's his title. Honor it. The Bible says he gave us, he says, I want you to have dominion over the fish over the cattle, over the creeps. You know what he said? We don't have a, a, the freedom to have dominion over. You know what he said? We don't have the freedom to have dominion over is other people. Hmm. What does that mean? Fellas, God has not given us the authority to have dominion and control over women or, or over other guys. That is an evolutionary philosophy. What is that? The survival of the fittest. If I can hold you down, if I can hold you back, if I can deny you opportunity to get ahead, so be it. That is evolution. That is Darwinism. Survival of the fittest. Natural selection. I'm stronger than you, I win. That's not the Bible. Mm -mm. The Bible says I was chosen by God and I'm going to walk in my chosenness. And what God wants me to have, I'm going to get it through obeying him. Period. I don't have to take advantage of you. I don't have to lie to you, manipulate you. I don't have to play games with your mind. I don't have to deceive you. That's the devil. That's evolution. That's not God. 
That's why evolution is a religion. We don't want God. We want to do things on our own. We, we, we came from science, so you know what? I'm just going to survive because all I'm going to do is die and go into dirt anyway. That's, that's evolution. That's not Bible. Bible says God chose me. He formed me in a womb. He has a purpose for my life, and he gave me above all creatures. Yes, above all creatures because I'm human, not because I'm better, because he made it that way. He gave me his image. Woo. He gave me the opportunity and the responsibility to have dominion, to care for the earth. You hear, talk about the, you heard of the, the term Mother Earth. The earth is not your mother. Let me tell you where that comes from. It's pantheism. It says that the earth is a living organism and the earth produced everything that's alive. It's not God. So whenever you say that, that's what they're saying. The earth is alive. The earth, no, no, no. God made the earth for us to care for, but God is the creator. Next one. Man was given a soul to feel and love like him. First Samuel says, I will raise up for myself a faithful priest who shall do according to what is in my heart and my mind. God has not called the gorilla to do what's in his heart and his mind. He's not called the, 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 the crocodile or the alligator to do what's in his heart. Only man. We played our last football game last night in Arizona. And I flew back in this little four-seater plane. And two of the kids on the team wanted to come back with me. So I said, you know, let me call your parents. Because, you know, I want them to know you're going to be in a plane. So we, they said, fine. So when we were getting on the plane, we were getting ready to get on the plane, someone came with the idea. It might have been me. It might have been somebody else. I can't remember. I really don't. But the, the idea was to play a trick on the mom. And the, the kid said, yeah, while I call up my mom and say, hey, mom, we're in the air. Everything's going great. And then say, oh, what's happening? What's happening? What's happening? Watch this. How many guys in here, that's a great trick. <laughs> How many ladies in here think that is a terrible trick? So I'm thinking, okay, you know, you, you, you okay? With your, you, you think your mom can handle it? Yeah, oh yeah, we're good. okay. So we started talking about what we're going to say, you know, all that stuff. <laughs> you have to know the family. <laughs> but, um, so my wife takes us to the airport. She had to stay, stay there, and she drove home, but with my son was still there. So she takes us to the airport, this little tiny airport, and um, we tell my wife what we're going to do. She says, oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. She looked me in my eye. Do not let that boy do that to his mother. <laughs> She had a mother's heart and a mother's mind, and she was feeling for this mom. God wants you to have his heart and his mind. He wants you to automatically know what he would think. He wants you to automatically think his thoughts, do what he would say, no matter what everybody else wants to do. He's given you that opportunity. We played this team. They had 13 players. They had ragtag uniforms, little guys, you know, regular guys that were the size of our guys, but then little tiny guys, pads all down here, pants all jacked up like that. And, and 13 guys, I'm thinking, man, we're going to kill these dudes. We had 22 guys, all coordinated jackets, all the coaches got new jackets. We had 30 cheerleaders, they had all their sweatsuits on, and they had 13 guys. We had twice as many cheerleaders as they had players. <laughs> Coach came up to us and said, listen, don't kill us. You know, we heard you throw the ball, we would score 50 points a game, please don't kill us. Like, man, you came out here. <laughs> I mean, we didn't fly all this way to, you know, just lay down and just let you win. And that ain't gonna happen, okay? <laughs> After the first quarter, we were losing. We couldn't stop these dudes. We heard, we heard the coach on the other side. I mean, they were going down the field, bam, bam, bam. bam. We're shuffling guys in, trying to stop them, shuffling guys in. They got 13 guys. They got two guys on the sideline. The rest of the team's on the field. <laughs> and the coach, the coach is yelling, 
don't let them rest. I mean, they were running play after play. They were like almost no huddle. Bam, bam, bam. And our guys were like, bam, bam. And they're like, don't let them rest. Don't let them rest. And I'm looking at them going, they are whooping us. <laughs> but we look good. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <laughs> we ended up winning the game, but we had big time respect for these dudes. They scored first, so we were losing seven nothing, and then we couldn't score. I mean, we they, so right before the first half, their quarterback got thrown out the game. <laughs> he punched one of our kids in the head. So. It was really sad because now they got 12 guys. <laughs> and I'm really feeling bad for the dudes, right? Because they're from East, they came from East LA. They drew far like we did. They, they, they had lost all these dudes, didn't come. We, we, we had several of our starters that weren't there either. But still, we still had 21 guys. And I'm thinking, he's on the, you know, had a, he had to take his shoulder pads off. He couldn't, you know, he was sitting on the bench like this. And I'm looking at this dude going, you know what? So he punched one of our guys in the head. <laughs> he got a helmet on, <laughs> right? I mean, what's the big deal? <laughs> That's what I'm thinking, right? And I saw his, the parents, he said, so, someone hit my son in the head. And I'm like, so? I mean, he's all right, right? He, you know, he ain't bleeding, got a broken nose. Just go home, just go home. He's all right. So I'm thinking. I woke up this morning really thinking this more so, that we should have let him play. Now, I don't know that we could have made that decision, the refs, you know. But we could have asked the ref, refs, look, you know, we drove out here, the game is meaningless. The brother's sitting on the bench, he's crying. They got to go all back to East LA. We got to go to San Diego. It doesn't matter who, you know, this is not a league game. It's just for fun. Let's let the brother play. Let's make it, they don't have a quarterback. How are they going to win now? And... But that didn't happen. But my point is this, is sometimes you're going to be in a situation where you can play by the rules, and God's going to say, psst, do this instead. And you'll be like, what, what, what? No, 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 do this instead. But that's not the way we do it. I want you to have my mind, my heart. In other words, next time someone offends you, you seek them out and tell them sorry. Are you kidding me? <laughs> next time someone owes you money, Tell them, don't worry about it. I'll pay you back. God, not Miles. <laughs> I'm not saying that you have to do it every time, but what I'm saying is that God says, I'm looking for someone that has my heart. I'm looking for someone that has my mind. He's given you that opportunity and that ability because he wants you to, rep you to represent him on earth. Look at the next one, number three. He has given us the ability to be holy so we can shine like him. There's a new uh, diamond commercial. <laughs> you know the commercial I'm talking about? You'll know in a minute. This guy is in his courtyard with his girlfriend or wife. I don't know who she is. And there's all these pigeons on the ground. And he says, I love this woman. I he starts yelling. She's like, oh, stop. But what she's really saying is, say it louder. <laughs> Whenever a woman tells you something, you have to reverse it. And that's what she really means, OK? <laughs> Y'all can think about that for a minute. <laughs> So he says, well, if I can't say it like that, let me say it like this. And he opens up this little box and it has diamond on it. And she says, oh, oh. And she gives him a hug. She says, I love this man. I love this man. You know what I'm talking about? OK, all the fellas, we done blocked this out of our memory, amen? I'll be looking for the button on the TV, blip off. Actually, I gave my, recently gave my wife a diamond, and um, um, I told her, I said, see, now that's the response I wanted when I gave you my diamond. 
<laughs> that response you gave me, oh, thanks. I ain't cutting it, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Not really kidding. But the value of the diamond is directly related to its bling bling effect. The price of the diamond is directly related to its bling bling effect. So when you show it somebody and you go blah ow, the bigger the blah ow, the more it's worth. If you don't know what bling bling and blah ow means, <laughs> I'm not gonna ask you to raise your hand. The bling bling is a sparkle. The 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 the, the ghetto fabulousness. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> the bling bling effect is its ability to reflect light. The better a diamond can reflect light, and the higher percentage that the diamonds reflects the light that comes into it, the more value of the diamond. End of story. But the diamond doesn't have any light of its own. It can only reflect light from another source. You and I have no light of our own. Your job, my job, is to reflect God's light. Holiness, bling bling, you and me. How much spiritual bling bling is in your life? Or are you just a Christian? Or are you just another person that's just like one of these animals that has a Bible in your hand? God says, I've given you an opportunity and responsibility to be holy and shine like me. So when people look at you, they go, something different. And they will. Trust me. They will notice it's something different. I walked in a man's house in Africa. Very wealthy man. And he didn't know me. I walk in the house with three other people. We sit in his living room. Very, very nice. He sits down in his chair. And he says, you're dangerous. He was saying it in a friendly, complimentary way, not in a bad way. He says, I'm going to stay away from you because I can tell you can have an effect on people. I never met this man before. And I'm like, what are you talking about? He's like, oh, he, he, yeah, he, I'm staying away from you. <laughs> I don't know what he's talking about. I think God said, that's my guy. Don't mess with him. God will say that about you. People will look at you and know you're different. They'll know that you are holy. Because you can look at some people and know that they're dark. Their heart, something's wrong. You can look at someone that you know and go, something's wrong, right? You can look at people and just know that there's darkness in their heart. There's no glow. Maybe you've never seen that before because God hasn't opened your eyes to see it because you're not close to him. But you can see them people. It's not because they're smiling. It's not about a smile. It's about his spirit. Look at, you look at, your, look at your notes. Holy, dedicated, used for God, set aside for a single purpose which is to glorify God. Separated from that which is bad, connected to that which is good. Humans have an exclusive ability, opportunity, and responsibility to represent the heart of God. When I was in Catholic school, it was holy water in the church. You came in the, in the lobby, excuse me, you came in the lobby, you dip your finger in the holy water, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, bless me, whatever, I can't remember what you said. But you went boom, boom, bada boom, bada boom. And then you walked in. That holy water, I used to always think growing up, man, I wonder if it's like, there's something in it. Is it like H2O and something else? You know what I'm saying? Is it like some Catholic ooze or oil or something that makes it holy. I went to Catholic school for eight years. So every, for eight years, I went in there thinking this was, you know, I always wanted to know what would happen if I drank it. <laughs> like, would I glow? Anybody, anybody, anybody ever grow up in Catholic? Could I? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> All holy water is it's the water that they use to baptize little babies. That's what it is. That holy water is the same water they use to baptize baby. All it is is H2O. 
that they have said we're only going to use for this purpose. That's all it is. You know, they prayed over, probably put a little incense thing, bada boom, bada da 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 boom. But all it is is H2O that they said we're only using it for this. God said he wants you and you and you and you to only be for him. Not for your husband, your wife, your boss, your teacher. Oh, yeah, you have relationships with those people, but you belong to him. And when he tells you to do something, you do it. That's holy. When my daughter was born, she had this baby smell. Ooh, whenever you go, uh, just a baby. Don't go, <laughs> you know, that kind of freak them out. <laughs> but if you just go over to a baby and just go, if you ever had a baby before and just use, it is the best smell. Every time I see babies, I just. I talked to a woman the other day, yesterday, she just had a baby. And I was like, isn't the baby smell so good? She's a doctor. And I said, what do you think it is? Do you think it's because they're, they're just healthy and they never eat any man-made food and just pure? And they, you know, they, they're just pure and they just, a pure God smell coming out. She says, yeah, I think that's probably part of it. I said, what's the other part? It's probably something deep, huh? She says, well, I think it's the baby shampoo we always use on them. <laughs> I was like, oh, man, huh? <laughs> well, maybe I need to get some of that stuff. <laughs> My daughter was born. I used to love to hold her and smell her. And one day, we had a babysitter come over the house, and she fell asleep on her neck. And the babysitter was a woman, and she had perfume. The perfume got in my daughter's skin. And it took a week for me to wash it out, for me to get my daughter back. The smell from the, my daughter's baby. I was so mad. I want it, when you have a baby, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. But my daughter was mine and my wife's. <laughs> I mean, I didn't want to leave her out, I, you know, I'm sorry. I mean, okay, I'll say it the other way. She was mine and my wife's. Okay, is that better? Okay. Okay, she was my wife's and mine. How about that? Whatever. <laughs> she was ours, same thing. Ours, mine, and yours. Okay. I'm sorry, she was ours. <laughs> Issues. <laughs> it's not that complicated. I'm not trying to say, I'm not trying to read anything in this. She was, she was our daughter. And this other woman. <laughs> Some of us have the mark of the world on us. And God's saying, I want you to be mine. Or, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, ours. That's what he wants. Holy. And you know what? Not like the crocodile, not like the gorilla, not like the eagle. Only you and me, he says that to him. In a minute, we're going to pray. You're going to, opportunity, you're going to have an opportunity to say, Lord, I am a sinner has never been forgiven. I know I'm not yours. I want to become yours and be forgiven because Jesus died for me. But some of you out there have been saved. But your animal instincts still control you. You're still selfish, egotistical, prideful, insecure, fearful. None of this from God. God says, no, I want you to be like me. I want you to be confident in who I called you to be, who I created you to be. I want you to be confident in who I designed you to be. God has given y'all gifts. Someone, the guy on the plane, he was asking me, he asked me a question, when did I get to the point where I could just share the gospel with anybody? He said, because I, I, I'm not as natural doing that. I said, let me tell you something. God has given you a, a supernatural ability to do something like he has given me a supernatural ability to do that. There are things that you can do I can't do and never will be able to do like you can do them. Every single one of y'all have something like that that he's given you to do and to do it amazingly great. You want that. That is when you're going to experience the joy of the Lord in the most Highest fashion, the most purest form is when you're doing what God created you to do. Not when you're doing what man wants you to do. But some of y'all still walking in the world. Still trying to figure out, you know, another animal. You want to say something about Adam and Eve. Here's the thing about Adam and Eve. When God made Adam, he said, Adam, sit down. I'm going to bring you all the animals. You name them because your brain capacity is amazing. Just go ahead. Boom, boom. Tell them all the names. And it wasn't every animal because all the species weren't made because the species didn't develop like they have today. But he said, boom, 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 boom. But you know what the Bible says? That God said, you know, I mean, Adam said, God, 
None of them are compatible with me to be my wife. Because God says, I'm going to give you a wife, sit down, I'm going to bring all the animals to you. He said, none of them are compatible. He had a discernment to know. Do you have the discernment to know? That just because a guy has ten toes and ten fingers and straight teeth, he's available, he's, he's compatible? Oh, no. Same thing with a woman. Just because she has this, that, and this, and that, she's your wife, your, your potential girlfriend? Oh, no. The compatibility goes deep because the image of God goes deep. You need to walk in the image of God first so you know who you are before you start going out and getting to me. So I want to pray for y'all, and some of y'all need to say, you know what, tonight, I want to either be saved or I want to step into an understanding of being in the image of God. Let's all bow our heads and pray. Lord, you say since the creation of the world, your invisible attributes are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made. Lord, there's so much we could talk about for years about how you did what you did. It would take 132 years to just read the information in DNA. If we read it 40 hours a week, it would take 132 years just to read DNA. How anyone could hear these things and understand these things and still think that there's no God or that it came by accident, I don't know. But Lord, the flip side is that, is that you say for those who want to believe, for those who want to have faith, for those who want to experience your love, for those who want to have their eyes open to their potential relationship with you, you tell them to call and you will answer. To knock and you will open the door. Peter's standing in the boat. You will stand on water. Peter said, Lord, I want to come to you. I want to experience imageness. Hmm. Jesus said, come. Lord, right now there are people here who want to come to you. They want to be saved. They want to be empowered. If you want to be saved or empowered, just pray the same prayer with me. One prayer in the privacy of your heart. Pray, dear God. I believe Jesus loves me, that he died. I believe I have a sinful nature. I want my sin forgiven. I want to have a new life. I want my animal instinct crucified. I want to be born spiritually today. I surrender my life to you today. Thank you. As our eyes are closed and our heads are bowed, if you pray that prayer, I'm going to ask you, as our eyes closed, our heads are bowed, this is between you and God, just to get up out of your seat and come down to the altar. Whether you want Christ as your Savior or you want to recommit your life to him, eyes closed, heads bowed, just get up out of your seat and come on down to the altar. God bless you. No look around. This is between you and God. God bless you. Stand right here in the front. God bless you. Good. Male, female, young, and old, God has given you all the ability, opportunity, responsibility to walk in his image. Anybody else? Good. Come on down here right now. Good. <laughs> Good. Men. That's right. Men. A male human. The greatest responsibility on earth. The male human has. He is the head of the house, but the biggest servant in the house. He's supposed to lead his wife, but honor his wife. He has the title that God has, Father. God's looking for godly men. Anybody else? Get up out of your seat. Women, too. Come on forward. Some of you ask Christ to be your Savior. Get up out of your seat. Come on down here. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Do not pass up this opportunity. Some of your hearts are beating. You're sweating. Your feet is, your leg is shaking. Because your body knows this is a big deal. Your body knows, let's go. Don't, 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 don't pass up another time. And your mind is telling you, I don't know, I ain't going up there. Anybody else? God bless you. Good. 
God bless you. Good. Good. Very good. Lord, I pray for people as they contemplate, as they think, as they argue with themselves, as they wrestle with the spirit, as they even counsel with the spiritual forces of darkness, telling them lies right now. I pray you set them free. I pray you deliver them, deliver them into the truth. Anybody else? Come on forward. God bless you. Good. God bless you. God bless you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Lord, I pray for all these people here on their knees. Lord, the plans you have for them, no eye has ever seen, no ear has ever heard. It's never entered into the heart of any man or one man. And, Lord, they're going to have questions. They're going to have fears and doubts. But, Lord, what they do have is you. Lord, we learned a lot over the last seven weeks. Probably too much information for some. But I pray, Lord, that you would bring back to our remembrance facts and verses, concepts, that we would really understand and know you are the creator. You do have a plan. We are part of that plan. You do love us. The Bible's true. And I pray, Lord, that as we are convinced and we believe that the Bible is true from the beginning, we must believe the end is true. And I pray we would understand that the devil is very educated. And he works through educated people as well as uneducated people. He works through all kinds. But those same kinds can be delivered by God. And I pray, Lord, that as we are told half-truths, that we would look to your word to get the whole truth. And, Lord, I pray these people kneeling here that, kneeling here, that you would set them free, that they may experience your image, that they may reflect your image, that they may have true dominion over what we're supposed to have dominion over, that they may shine like they're supposed to shine. That they may love and feel and act and forgive like they're supposed to love, feel, and act and forgive. And that when you say go right, they say, yes, sir. When you say go left, they say, yes, sir. When you say go left again, they don't say why again. They say, yes, sir, again. And then they go to bed and say, God, I don't understand, but I do know it was right. And I pray, Lord, that in the time, when the time is right, you show them the reasons why you do the things you do. Lord, we want to tell you today that we love you. We thank you. We want to tell you today, hopefully we trust you more today than yesterday. We want to tell you today that we have no one, nothing but you. There's nowhere else we can go for the words of life. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Let's give these people a hand. Don't leave anywhere, but let's give these people a hand. Amen. 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 All y'all can, all y'all can stand up. I want to tell you one, tell one thing. In a minute, we're going to ask all y'all to walk that way and make a left. We need people who are small group facilitators or leaders in the church to come pray with these people. But God has, has a plan for all y'all. No matter what has happened to this point, God wants to say it's over. He wants to start over. And guess what? He can start over. He can make any crooked street straight. <laughs> he can make any entangled ball of mess of yarn untangled like that. He won't do it like that all the time. 18 years ago, I was in a crack house in a bathroom with a guy making crack. He was about 80 pounds, grown man. And I sat there for a half an hour watching him make this crack and smoke it. And then my friend who brought me to the house smoked it. And I stood right there within this proximity. Well, this guy and this guy on my right and this guy on my left. And I'm sitting there going, man, that looks evil. Man, that looks dangerous. Thinking I was a good guy, I said, I'm going to go in here and do my cocaine. <laughs> One blind, ignorant fool to another. But, you know, I remember being in the house and saying, I can't cross that line. And my friend later said, I can't believe you didn't do it. Well, I never had the experience he had to know what I was missing. And I'm so glad I didn't. 
But God set me free. And one day, he set me free. I stopped in one day. There's no limit to what he can do. I don't know what your problems are, but to God, they're easy for him to fix. Your only job, your only job is to obey him. When he says do that, you do that. Don't ask questions. Do not question God. Do it, and you can ask him why later, but don't say, well, I'm not going to know. I'm not going to do it until I understand. Oh, no, don't play that game because you won't. He'll just say, okay, forget you then. You ever remember that? Forget you. Did we used to do this? Do this finger? Well, that means forget you. Then you all know that? No, you don't know that? This is the East Coast thing. Mm, like that. If you say to God, God, forget you, he'll say, okay. But I'll be right here. I'll be right here. All you got to do is do what he says. And you see your life start to do this. Change. That's all I've been doing for 18 years. That's it. Nothing special. Just doing what he says. And when I say forget you, God, and I want to do my own thing, he says, okay, go ahead. I fall on my face. He says, you ready to start again? Okay, I'm sorry. Let me go right back to that. And I've done that a million times. And no, and I'm, and the day I say forget you, God, I'm going to fall down again. It happens all the time. It's like clockwork. Why? Because God don't play by our rules. He plays by his rule. His rule is you got to walk by faith. We're going we're gonna, to, in a minute, John, see that guy right there? And, and he's waving his hand. We're going to send all y'all to him. You're going to make a left. There's going to be people back here who are going to pray for you. If you are someone who can pray for us, you've been in leadership, we want you to come pray for these people. The rest of y'all, next week, bring a friend back. Bring a friend back. Okay? Amen? Let's, let's give them a hand as they walk out. Make a left. Amen. Give them a hand.